Well, good morning. Welcome to St. Matthew this morning on this lovely day that we get to praise the Lord right here in this holy house. Let's rise this morning. Let's sing, all creatures of our God and King. Open your hearts and minds for worship today. I have a tough question for all of you that were here last week. What was the topic? Do you remember? Pastor Paul, do you ever feel like that sometimes? <laughs> Many times. You've preached, and before they left, I heard it. Of course, you're having your child baptized, you remember those important things. Love. Remember what the message was at the very end that you had to say three times? Should we practice it again? I am loved. I am loved. I am loved. God loves you. Our identity is found in God's love. And remember, we're on our second week now of this book, Love and Scent. We ran out of them last week. There's more out there now if you would like to get this. But our sermon topics and our small groups are all meeting using this book. And it's finding your identity and that you're loved and sent by God. 
So we do have our picnic happening right after this service. If you signed up, great. If you haven't, great. Still come and enjoy some food and fellowship. You know, it was kind of funny yesterday. It was going to be outside, and then it was going to be inside because it was going to rain. And so that was my thought this morning. I actually told the 8 o'clock people it was inside. And then as I was during the 8 o'clock service, I saw it all getting set up outside. So it's actually outside because the rain's going to hold off. We've got a promise by God, I think. For some reason, we're holding off that rain. As I said, our small groups have started on the Love and Scent book. You can still join them. They're listed inside your bulletin. And our Connect class has started as well. Also, is Zach here somewhere? No. Is there a youth group today? Yes. Okay, I was going to say, Zach, is there a youth group? Yes, there's youth group this evening for all those that want to come out and be part of that as well. Well, let's stand and begin our liturgy. We make our beginning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name and make his praise glorious. Come and see what God has done, his awesome deeds for mankind. We have honor and thanks to God. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Let us now confess our sin to God and our merciful Father. Gracious God, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We have not always been devoted to you and have failed to live as your disciples. Our thoughts, words, and deeds have not looked to you. We have failed to see us. Trusting in your mercy, we come to you for forgiveness. Our trust is not in ourselves but in the merits of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, O God, and forgive our sins. Guide us into a renewed life that reflects your goodness and love. See what great love the Father has lavished upon us, that we should be called children of God. God is indeed loving and gracious, and merciful and hears our prayers. Your sins have been paid for by Christ. They are forgiven. Amen. Let us share Christ's peace with one another.
you with another child, Molly Grace. Today, God's creative and saving work continues in her life. God will take ordinary water and add to it the power of his word and the promise of forgiveness, life, and salvation, the assurance of God's everlasting love for Molly in Jesus Christ. From God's word, we learn that we are conceived and born sinful and need of forgiveness. And the Father of all mercy and grace sent his son Jesus Christ to atone for that sin for the whole world, and that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. It is our Savior that looked at little ones such as these and said, let the little children come to me, for the kingdom belongs to such as these. And Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that he commands them. Molly Grace, you see the sign of the cross on the head and somewhere on the heart. Show that you are marked and redeemed by Christ the crucified. So everyone in the congregation and the family has a responsibility to Molly Grace. And so therefore I ask you, will you care for this child through your prayers and through the ongoing ministries of the congregation? If so, answer, we will with God's grace. Joseph. In presenting Molly for holy baptism, you are promising to raise her in the grace and knowledge of our Lord. I therefore ask you, will you remind her often of the blessings she received in baptism, and will you strive in all things to give witness to and model the Christian faith and life as parents? If so, answer, we will, with God's help. Emily and Titus, you have been chosen as baptismal sponsors for this child. I therefore ask you, will you remember her in your prayers? Will you put her often in mind of her baptism? And will you offer this child your counsel and aid so she continues to be raised in the Christian church and may grow up to lead a godly life? If so, answer, we will with God's help. And the four of you, speaking on behalf of Molly, do you renounce the devil and all of his works and all of his ways? If so, answer, I do renounce them. And together we renew our baptismal covenant as we boldly profess the faith of the triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that we baptize Molly into in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. I have experience with this. <laughs> Molly, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Who's pouring water on you when you're nice sleeping? The newest member of St. Matthew Lutheran Church. They're all clapping for you. May the Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth in water and spirit and has forgiven you all of your sins, strengthen you in his grace and life everlasting. Amen. And receive now this light, this flame of this candle. Show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Be, live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into his kingdom, which shall never end. And let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, 
We thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Molly the new birth in holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, you would keep Molly in her baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, she may grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Titus, we have a job for you to hang this dove up on the banner over there. And the dove represents the Holy Spirit that now is inside Molly that she has. Thank you very much. We continue with the prayer of the day. Heavenly Father, you are compassionate and gracious, and always hear the prayers of your children. Keep us steadfast and faithful in our prayers, trusting in your wisdom and guidance. May we always remember your merciful goodness and give thanks for all the blessings through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear God's word. The Old Promise reading is from the second book of Chronicles, the 30th chapter. King Ezekiah sent word to all of Israel and Judah and also wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh, inviting them to come to the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem and celebrate the Passover to the Lord, the God of Israel. At the king's command, messengers went throughout Israel and Judah with letters from the king and from his officials, which read, People of Israel, return to the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, that he may return to you who are left, who have escaped from the hand of of the kings of Assyria. Do not be like your parents and your fellow Israelites who were unfaithful to the Lord, the God of their ancestors, so that he made them an object of horror as you see. Do not be stiff-necked as your ancestors were. Submit to the Lord. Come to his sanctuary, which he has consecrated forever. Serve the Lord your God, so that his fierce anger will turn away from you. If you return to the Lord, then your fellow Israelites and your children will be shown compassion by their captors and will return to this land for the Lord your God is gracious and compassionate. He will not turn his face from you if you return to him. The new promise reading is from the first book of John, the second chapter. And now, dear children, remain in fellowship with Christ so that when he returns, you will be full of courage and not shrink back from him in shame. Since we know that Christ is righteous, we also know that all who do what is right is, are God's children. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. 
Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. goodness of God, I will sing 
of the goodness of God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied. And your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be and remain with you all. Amen. You pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, as I was preparing for our message today and thinking about our lessons and our theme that we have with our congregational focus here with the loved and sent study, and I... uh, always deeply moved by that gospel lesson. And my mind went back to something that happened to me quite a few years ago, about 43 years ago, in the summer of 1980. And I've shared this with uh, some of you before. 
And it was when I was with my brother and my grandmother and her cousin and a few other traveling companions. And we were in the city of Salzburg. I see we have a picture of it right there in Austria. And it was during the opera festival they're famous for in August. And the result was there was music everywhere. And there were people everywhere. And what I remember, and this is the connection with this uh, lesson, I got lost. And you can see the streets could be full, the streets could be all curving around in all sorts of different ways as a lot of those old cities of Europe will do. And I was taking a picture with a camera, which we used in those days, and I took the picture, and while I was taking that picture in this square there by the cathedral, my family and the others went around a corner and down a street. I looked around, and I had no idea which street they had taken. And I was lost. And I don't mind telling you that I was beginning to be more than a little in panic what to do. So I went back to where we had had lunch, at a little, this restaurant there in the historic area, and I was trying to find anything, any hope that I could find the family. The people at the restaurant were very, very nice, and between my attempts at German and their attempts at English, we uh, communicated well. In fact, the owner was very kind and uh, put me in his car and drove me around and uh, had me re memorize every street so that I would find my way back, and uh, to this day, I know Salzburg particularly well, and to no avail, nothing, could not find them. So back to the restaurant we went, and in despair, I crossed over the little square that was there, and into this church, the Peterkirche, the St. Peter's Church, and in all its Baroque glory. But that wasn't the part that was drawing me in. I just went into there with those wide open doors, went about halfway up that long aisle, and there, instead of pews, there were chairs there and kneelers, and I was down on that kneeler and praying for divine intervention. And as soon as I stood up and turned around, back toward that entry door, which was wide open and sunshine flooding in, there stood my brother, right in the middle, looking right down the aisle at me. And in the instant, <laughs> I knew I was found. Now, brothers can sometimes, as kids, we uh, had our little tiffs and uh, things would happen, but I loved my brother. He's no longer with us. He's in glory. But I was never so glad to see my brother as I was that day. And from that moment of being in such fear, in the second, it all disappeared. I was back with the family. Everything was fine. And I think about that in light of our text today. We think about these emotions. You think of what is important in life, what seems important to us, money, or our plans that we have that fill our minds and our imaginations. But in a moment like that, it all comes down to one simple thing, that basic need that we all have, be loved, belong, be in that family. And that's at the heart of the gospel today, at the heart of our wonderful Lord. As this series continues that we are following this at this time here at St. Matthew. And last week, Pastor Blaze shared with us that theme of love. And now this week, we talk about the love and God the Father. You know, it's interesting what the world will think of as important and what your identity is them, it's um, how much money do you have, or how many people like you, or how many friends do you have, all the things, your possessions. But with our Lord, 
and the identity that he gives to his people, everything is radically different, an entirely different story. And we can see that in this wonderful parable. You know, our Lord's parables are amazing. He spoke those in that first century A.D. in Palestine, and 21 centuries later, that story, that parable, is as recognizable and resonates as clearly as it did in all the centuries in between. All those parables, as soon as he starts, you can picture what's happening. A sower went out to sow seed. A woman had ten coins and had lost one. Or there was a shepherd who had a hundred sheep and one went astray. Right here in this one, a man had two sons. You can already picture this scenario. That parable, parabole in Greek, to cast alongside. More than a story, it's something to try on for size. That's what he wants us to do. Do we dare do it? Do we dare take that story, that message, place it alongside our own lives? As we look at that message, too, we're reminded that we, in some ways, on a very basic human level, can identify with pretty much everyone in that story at one time or another, perhaps at one point in our lives being the child that made some bad choices. Maybe we've been the child that feels unfairly treated. Maybe we've been the parent who is trying to convey that love that that parent has to reconcile members of the family. But as we actually look at the context, and our Pastor Blaze is so good about reminding us the importance of context, that really what sparks this parable being told, it was with response to those leaders of the Judaic community there, the scribes, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law. And that context is saying, what they need to see, and more in the realm of that older brother and his resentfulness. Pontius Pilate, we read later on, Matthew 27, as those accusations are being railed at Jesus, Pilate tries to change that condemnation and that word is added in Matthew 27, for he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered Jesus up to him. They were envious, like that brother in that text. And that brother who could not believe that this one that he considered to be so worthless and such a problem, that his father would lavish such love on him. And in so saying, he shows how little he really knows about his father and the depth of the love that he has for both his sons. His father is saying, if you're not feeling included, it's not because of the father. It's his own pettiness, scornfulness. The fact that he is not a part of the celebration is his own pulling back and isolating himself. And even more, one thinks about that very term by which that parable is so frequently known, the prodigal son. That term for many is in light of that opening portion there of the younger son is seen as going astray or being lost. And I actually thought that for many years until I was, it was pointed out to me, the word prodigal, well, there you have it, uh, that it is actually to be a spendthrift. It's calling attention to the fact of how recklessly spendthrift he had been, how to spend to the point of having nothing. And in a very real way, as more than one theologian has pointed out, it's not just so much the prodigal son, you could say the prodigal father. Because of his lavish 
generous love that he is giving without holding back. His love for his children with all their imperfections. So the question becomes, are we willing to receive that Lord and all that he would do in the mixture of our lives and all the things that he can work through for our well-being with our new identity? And really it was Molly that showed us the way today. Pure grace and receiving the love of God the Father that transformation of her identity that she shares with us as the children of God. Because we do have that older brother, Jesus, son of God, but son of Mary, who entered into this world that he would be our brother. And he was the one that went to that cross. Would you go willingly to that cross? He did. And he did it for you, for me. That was more than just affection or fondness or good wishes. That cross reminds me of the passionate love of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit that was poured out for each of us. That is the true cross and the true salvation. When he says to take up your cross, he's no longer talking about the salvation part of it. He's already taken care of all that. Paid for it once and for all. But he's inviting us to live now as part of his family. To exist and to live in him, to live through him and let our witness come through us in the power of the Spirit. And to see how the Lord can make all these things of our lives, even the troubles and trials, come out for the good. As I was thinking about that, I was thinking also about memories of the past I've thought also about that very church I've shared before, that church in Austria, that when I was back at school, at the prep school there, that I had talked to a friend of mine, and he had been backpacking through Europe that summer, and his father had become ill, and he didn't know what to do. It was a Sunday, and so he went into a church, and he prayed, and he said it was actually a Catholic church, and he was in distress. I guess it was obvious there was a nun that walked up to him and expressed concern. After a little while of expressing he needed to get back to the United States, he was delighted to realize that this lady there in Austria had actually spent nine years in a convent in Minnesota and spoke perfect English. And she said, well, as a matter of fact, she had good friends that were travel agents there right in the city and that they were able to get him the tickets he needed, put him on a train, send him to the airport, and off he went back home. And as we talked back at the school there at Concordia, I said, what church was that? The Peterkirche in Salzburg. How the Lord can bring all these things together. And I remember that church very well and with great fondness and appreciation. I also think about how the things that can happen in our lives as my ministry continues. I've shared before, I was uh, assigned my first parish, now almost 40 years ago, as is our Missouri Synod custom, I was assigned that first time. After that, you can take calls to other places. But I, as some of you know, I was given three choices they do. And so I said, well, the Midwest, where I grew up, the uh, Mid-Atlantic, where I had my roots and my family, or New England, where I had done my internship, had been vicar. And so, of course, they sent me to Texas. And I remember being kind of grumpy about it and kind of resisting that and kind of grousing about saying, gee, Lord, how is Texas in New England? And do you really want me to go there? I thought, well, I suppose he does. And so I'm going to go ahead and get in the car and head on down to Texas to Rockdale outside of Austin, the Grace Lutheran Church, and I had 
five wonderful years in Texas. And it was wonderful. In fact, to the point, then I got the call to come back here, my dream, and yet it was so hard to leave Texas after I had come to love those people so much and still in touch with so many of them to this day. The Lord could take that mix of all the craziness of our human lives, Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to those who love God, called according to his purpose, our identity in him. It's kind of like that old story of, uh, I was got a kick out of the uh, pastor visiting at a men's prayer breakfast. And an old farmer had been invited to ha say grace at the thing. So they bowed their heads and were praying and the, the old man started out, oh Lord, you know, I hate buttermilk. This visiting pastor, he opened his eye and looked, not sure what to make of it. Lord, you know, I don't like lard. Where is this going? And Lord, you know, I'm not much for raw white flour. By this point, he's looking around. He can see lots of other people are getting pretty uncomfortable too. And then he said, but oh, Lord, you know, I love biscuits. And when they're all mixed together, it's mighty fine. Lord, I know that when things are hard for us, or we can't always understand what you are doing in our lives, or which way you're going to guide us in our lives, help us to remember that you're the one that will mix it together and bring it all out. It'll be even better than the biscuits. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God so loved the world. With that identity, God so loved you. And so he's saying over you and over me, I want to celebrate because you were dead. But now you're alive. You were lost, but now you are found. Thanks be to God. Amen? Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> please, <clears throat> please stand as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, gracious, prodigal God, lavishing us with your love, we praise and thank you for all that you have given us. For Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, for your Holy Spirit, for the gift of fellowship and love of people in this world, for all the material things you've given us. You've blessed us in so many ways for being able to be your tool in this world. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would look down upon all those that are crying out and, and hurt and pain and wondering what the future holds, particularly those in Morocco from the earthquake and those in Libya from the flood, those in Ukraine from the war, those that are hurt in our society. Lord, we ask that you be with them and that they realize that you are their God, their loving Father. God, we ask that you look down upon the leaders of the world and that they make decisions that take care of those that they are tasked to serve and that they use their power to help others according to your will. Lord, we thank you for those that protect us, those in the armed forces, those in the police force and emergency workers. Lord, we ask that you keep them safe and that when they go out the door, you be with their loved ones as they worry about them. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with those that are hurting, physically and mentally, financially, 
Lord, we ask that you be with those who we name in our hearts. Heavenly Father, have us be your hands and your feet. Open our eyes and ears to those that are in need that we can serve them and show them the love that you have given to us and that we can be your tool in today's world. Lord, we look forward to that time when we will be in your presence at your heavenly banquet in our heavenly home. Lord, keep us remembering that we are loved and that we are your children. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness and the assurance of your fatherly care. Guided by the Holy Spirit, renew our hearts and minds to live out our faith in ways that are pleasing to you. Fill us with thankfulness and praise as we joyfully anticipate eternal life in your heavenly kingdom. To you alone, O Lord, be all honor and glory, for you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant, the new promise for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We believe that this is Christ's true body and blood, and if you do too, you are welcome to our table. Please be seated.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you steadfast in the true faith for life eternal. Amen. We pray as the Lord taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Pastor Paul, next steps. Well, I would say, maybe as a challenge during the week, as the challenges inevitably come, and you're faced with things that are hard to understand or where the Lord may be leading, I just maybe urge as a word of comfort and encouragement to remember the deep theology of the biscuits. <laughs> the Lord will make it all come out all right. 
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he look down upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Sing. Father, let your will be done. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day. Forgive us, and forgive the ones who sin against us. Forgive them, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come. Say, Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven. Right here in my heart, yeah. Father, let your kingdom come. Hey! Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Right here in my heart. Give us this day a daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sin against us. Forgive them. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Said, so let your kingdom come. It's yours, all yours, all yours, all yours. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. It's yours, it's yours. kingdom come father let your will be done on earth as in heaven right here in my heart yeah. father let your kingdom come father let your will be done on earth as in heaven right here in my heart on earth as in heaven right here in my heart Peace, serve the Lord. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. On earth as in heaven, right here. 